hometown boy who made good in his own way, painting haunting scenes of the rural South and his own city, New Orleans. Not really realistic, not quite abstract, but always distinctive. The Roland Golden Way. He's the only American artist to be exhibited in a one-man tour of the Soviet Union in history. Roland Golden, our guest tonight on First Person. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome once again to First Person. And we'd like you to welcome Roland Golden, hometown boy, as we said, who became internationally famous as an artist. And I want to start off with your Russian trip, if you don't mind, and then we'll get, we'll kind of go back to your beginnings in New Orleans, your artistic inspiration, and show some of your paintings. Okay. But as far as I know, no one else, no American artist has ever had a one-man traveling show through the Soviet Union. Well, that's what I was told at the time. There have been a, a numerous other Americans who've had one-man shows, but this show toured, uh, which made a difference between it and the others. And I don't know if there's been one since then, but uh -huh. uh, I can only go by what they say. I was the first. Where did it tour? Moscow? Uh, it opened in Moscow in November of 1976, and it was there for, open there for two weeks mm -hmm. at the uh, Friendship Palace. Then it went to uh, Leningrad later and was open there at their Friendship Palace for two weeks, then on to Kiev and then Odessa. And it was seen during the course of that time by over 100,000 people, which was nice. How many paintings? 51 paintings uh, covering about 20 years of my career. It was sort of a, you know, a mini respect, re retrospect. Uh -huh. And uh, response to the show was excellent. Well, as we go along, we'll show a few of the paintings that were in the exhibit to give them an idea okay. of what the Russians saw. But there was some uh, misgiving, I think, on the part of a uh, number of people that your paintings might show a kind of decadent, run-down United true. States, and it was unpatriotic. Yes, I, I received some criticism uh, about that. Uh, in fact, even several, just a couple of years ago, people, some people were still talking to me about it. They wanted me to paint grain elevators and uh, corporate buildings and uh, they would have had to pick another artist if they wanted somebody that did that to show those things. I don't think that as far as I could tell there, uh, there was no political axe to grind uh, for the show. Uh, it they were looking for uh, paintings that would have a meaning to the Russian people mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted to see what life in America was like through the eyes of, a, of an American and not th uh, through a corporate uh, head. Right. And this was not sponsored by the U.S. government. No, the U.S. So, government had nothing to do so with it. So therefore, the Soviets could enter into the exhibit feeling, well, th this is not government propaganda. And I assume that uh, there are Soviet citizens who feel that we give out as much propaganda as they do. Well, I'm sure. Um, for all I know, we do. <laughs> you talk with Soviet citizens. That's what always interests me. Most of uh, most of what we get are the results of officials talking to officials. How do they react to your paintings? What questions do they ask? Well, I was only present for the opening in Moscow, but this uh, particular piece, which was an called Ancestors, is taken from an old tintype photograph of the 1850s, uh, where in the, the mother and the children are of that era are painted, and uh, some of the children died subsequently. So I try to capture uh, the strength of the mother and the, the, you know, the power in the children. And of course, two of the figures are only partially painted, and those two children happen to die later on. But that's, uh, that's uh, uh, this painting of the cow, the, the mud queen, which is really a jigsaw puzzle, uh, was their second favorite in the show, at least the comments that we received. They love the cow. Of course, they, they love it for its other reasons. But uh, the Russian people are very, very uh, tuned into art. They're very ardent art supporters. They well, of course, there we have a common link with, you know, people to people, don't we? They, they have uh, vast areas of rural life. They can associate with ancestors, certainly. Yes, and then here the cow, uh, the cow and the land are one in that painting. The, so the mud puddles and the spots on the cow and the leaves and the tree all are one pattern. That's why uh, I mentioned in the introduction that you're not really a realist and you're not really an abstractionist, but you're kind of both. Yes. And at times there are blends and, and what... Will you take a little license here and there yes. to bring home a point? Yes, I do. A commentary. You know? Yeah, I do. I do that. I don't do that in all of my work. Yeah. Uh, I, many, uh, I'd say the majority of my paintings are just paintings of landscapes or subjects or something like that. I do, try, however, try to impose my own view of those particular objects uh, in my work. I try to make them 
such that people realize that an, an intelligence has been at work and developing that composition that I just didn't wander around and find something nice and paint it. Mm -hmm. What do you remember most about the reaction of, let's say, the man on the street or the person who came to view the exhibit? In Russia? Yeah, about well, the Russian people. Uh, now, now, keep aside the communist government and the ministries and all that. You mean the, the, the people, people themselves? The people that you met, yeah. The overriding uh, impression I have uh, was that they were very happy that we went. Uh, they, and they were very pleased about it. Yeah. And uh, uh, at the opening in Moscow, uh, which was attended by about four or five hundred people, and the, um, even had a few people from the American Embassy show up. Uh, I had to give up and get up and give a little speech, which was a death to me to have to do. Uh, but I ended up by saying that the, they say a, thou, a painting is worth a thousand words. Well, hopefully these pa 51 paintings will be worth 50,000 words for better understanding between our peoples. Well, perhaps that's very naive, but uh, at least I had an opportunity to do something. You know, it doesn't mean I don't, don't love my country. I do, <laughs> and I get mad at the Russians just like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. But I think we have to keep talking to each other. Yeah. And they, the people themselves were very enthused. And we had some people that came back because we were there for the opening, and then we went back in two or three times later on and just to see if anyone was there and if there would be an opportunity to talk to them. And fortunately, I had an interpreter, but most, most of the Russians we met mm -hmm. spoke English. Well, painting is, is kind of a Berlitz type thing, isn't it? It transcends languages. Yes. It does. You don't need a caption on ancestors. You don't need one on the cow. No. That cow could be in the Ukraine right That's now. That's right. It could be. Maybe being slowly so poisoned, but in the Ukraine. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I think that's why it's so important to maintain the continuing flow of art forms and culture between the United States and Russia, that, um, because it is a common ground, a common message. And, and even if there's uh, a particular art form neither side uh, totally understands, and then it's a way of understanding is a way of learning a little bit more about the people. I don't want to get into this at any great length, but an attempt was made, some serious attempts, to have your one-man historic show exhibited at our own New Orleans <clears throat> Museum, mm -hmm. and it was turned down. Why did that happen? Uh, I really have no idea why it was This was down. an international touring exhibit. As you said, it's historic, stands alone almost, and it had a great deal of success. Uh, yes, I was, uh, I was frankly upset at the time that uh, I, I, I will say, in all honesty, that the Contemporary Arts Center offered it, offered me to show it there. Yeah. But at the time, it looked like uh, there was something developing in Washington, yeah. and it would be shown there, and, and it would be a confliction of dates. Well, now, the, the United States government was not too happy about this, or at least, let's say, you were damned by neglect. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about the entire United States government, but the, certainly the embassy people in I'm, Moscow right. were very, very uncooperative, Which uh, is almost the United resentful. States government. Yeah, that's true. Russia. They were very resentful. In fact, uh, do you have any idea why they were resentful? The only thing I can assume is because they didn't have anything to do with it. Okay. But, uh, you know, for instance, the, uh, the American culture. But wait a minute now. They were also, they were pushing a lot of this, uh, uh, oh, what? Abstract, really abstract, cubistic uh, art, non-representational in the extremists. Yes, they were they? they were pushing a lot of extreme avant-garde art, which okay. is what they wanted to bring over. To sum it up. So and the Russians uh, didn't, didn't want, want that, no. And they they liked what I did. And um, maybe that, you <laughs> maybe you've just told us a lot about why we have difficulties so often at high levels. Well maybe if the people were a little closer in some of these cultural exchanges, it might be better. Like you said, you felt obliged to, to Well try. I you know, well, I think it's good to send out and art because it is one aspect of what we do, but it's not the only thing that we do in art. Yeah. And after all, it's their country. I mean, if they don't want it, they don't have to take it. We can't impose our will upon them. I had a very, un very unpleasant conversation with the uh, yeah. cultural attaché there over the telephone, and a, a reporter from TASS was sitting right in our room interviewing me at the time he called, which was the day before we were to leave. Okay. And I was, I was so mad at him, but I couldn't say anything to him because I didn't want to say it in front of the task report. I didn't want to give them any reason to write mm -hmm. anything like that. Roland, you've worked very hard at becoming an artist. The general stereotype of the artist is someone who lives on inspiration, is divinely inspired perhaps at age four, grows up, lives in an attic or a ghetto or, or rather, garret, uh, has mm -hmm. four or five kept women, drinks wine all the time, and gets <laughs> up at three in the morning. How about that for extremists? No. Artists have to discipline their lives though, pretty strictly. And I know your wife works very closely yes, with does. you in the yes. management 
and uh, thank God she handles all of the business the and business affairs. yeah and and, and um, keeps me free from having to fool with that. But what kind of a day or night or what kind of a routine do you? Uh, well, I have a, a you know a routine. Uh, I I start I start late. I quit late. You know, and sometimes I go back up and work again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and every artist has to find their own routine, what, sh what fits their own personality. I just wrote some, uh, an article on this for a magazine, mm -hmm. and, um, and the article is around motivation. And every artist I know that is successful, and I know a few, has a routine that they follow. It, it may not be a, a nine to five routine, it may not be an everyday routine, maybe an every other week, every other month, but they do have a routine and they stick to it and they work hard. Art, art is very hard work. Mm -hmm. People don't realize it, the majority of the people. Uh